Okay, so, uh, I was not planning on doing this stream, and on my way to work today, I actually heard that Nintendo is doing another Nintendo Direct, slated for tomorrow, so I'll probably do a reaction stream on Friday, because Thursday is going to be my birthday, so I won't be streaming during that day. So, what are we here to talk about today? Today, we're going to be talking about the Galaxy S9, the Galaxy S23, and how it comes up with 60 gigs of bloatware. I'm not kidding. 6-0, 60 gigabytes of bloatware. Now, as a refresher, you know what, you know, five years ago, there was... There was, like, the Galaxy S9 Plus, right? That phone was... Everyone was head over heels for that phone. I remember that because... In fact, it's so head over heels that Canadian reviewer Matt Mondes said that it was the world's first perfect smartphone. In his thumbnail. And his title or something, his video title or something. Now, I was a little skeptical at first, but then my mom said that, oh, hey, let's get you a Galaxy S9, and then I used it. I loved that phone. I mean, it's been my phone f for the past, like, between 2018 and the beginning of 2022, because it's been my daily driver for, for like, those four years, and even throughout the pandemic, too. But now I'm using a Pixel 6 XL and it's not that impressive, so... But again, why are we here? Because <laughs> five years ago, Samsung did a much better job. They just rose from the ashes. Like... <laughs> with the... <laughs> with the S9? Because the Note 7 debacle actually <laughs> caused them to like, uh... Recess a little bit. And... The S8 was... Was okay, but the S9 was the first Samsung smartphone in the US to come unlocked. And everyone loved it. In fact, they still use it as a music player to this day. However, with the S23... It's... Really unimpressive and boring. Recycled glass, more cameras, 60 gigabytes of bloatware. For reference, that's more than the entire s storage of internal storage of the baseline Galaxy S9 five years ago. It's one, it's four times the, the size of a normal Android 13 install on the, the Pixel 7 Pro. And it's also, like... Even Windows 11 doesn't use that much storage on the, an initial install. Like... 60 gigs of bloatware, come on. That's... Uh, in the base model of the Galaxy S23, that's half the storage. And if you are... If you buy the phone from AT&T, which I highly advise you don't, especially after the controversy that AT&T had with Newsmax or something. Then... There'll be even more bloatware that you can't remove. And let me tell you, as a user of a AT&T Galaxy S6, bloatware is no fun. Like, let me just read an article from Android Authority, which was what I read six years ago prior to the, um, certain events in the US. So, hold on. Wait, I'm going to turn off, uh, hold on, let's do effects only. Actually, I'd be better off if I muted this, so, 
If I do that, and let me read the new article. I will also mute the, uh, okay. So let's get reading to the article. Bloatware on the Galaxy S3 inflates Android 13 to 60 gigabytes. Yes, I'm not kidding. <laughs> but on the Pixel 7, it only uses about 15 gigs. And there's just too much bloatware and shit on there. It has a big... They had a big launch party for the S23, but it was more of a disappointment than... A launch party. We here at Android Authority can confirm that Samsung's version of Android on the Galaxy S23 is weighing at around 60 gigabytes. 60 gigabytes is twice the size of Windows 11 and it would always take up half a storage on a 128 gig phone. Or if you were if you if you're comparing this to the Galaxy S9 from five years ago with 64 gigs of storage, then that's the whole. That's a whole fucking storage, right? Right? I mean, Android comes with a ton of Google apps, but Samsung is make Samsung is cloning those ecosystems. So you get two collections of similar apps because Samsung is contractually obligated to include the Google apps. Samsung tends to sell space on its device. That means companies like Facebook can buy a spot on your phone, so and it gets added to Samsung's system partition. What's worse is many of these apps are not well, are uninstallable. Others sit <coughs> sixty gigs sounds bad. It could have been a lot worse if Samsung stored two copies of the OS like other phones do. Samsung is the only major manufacturer that doesn't. However. As I said before, if you buy your S23 from AT&T, which I highly advise you not to because of the fact that AT&T literally took out Newsmax out of DirecTV, and many Republicans on Twitter have called it an act of censorship, then even more storage is going to be used up, and your, your phone will perform like shit. So, and and they keep touting about how you how you could get cloud storage or something. But as I as I iterated before, if you use cloud storage, your data is not safe. The corporations can take away all your data if you mess up, and not just that, but there's also the prospect of. Of hackers too, and also forgetting your password and stuff, which unfortunately my friend has not been able to recover her like her like data on iCloud after forgetting her password. So as so as I said, not a good luck for Samsung. Especially since five years ago, they, it was just, everything was much better five years ago. Maybe except for the New York City subway, but everything was much better five years ago, before the pandemic. Yes, there were some issues, but overall, I'd pick, I'd pick 2018 out of any year this decade. Even though 2022 is still, like, in my opinion, one of the better years this decade. I would not pick any year of this decade in my life to be a good year. I mean, any year in this decade to be a good year of my life. Sorry. Plus, there's also the prospect of, like... 2021, like, a lot of people keep, like, really bothers me is a lot of people keep saying that 2021 was better than 2022, but I did not feel that at all, honestly. So it's really with a lot of stuff that happened in that year. And not even a week into that year. I don't know. I'm 
I'm obligated to remain silent because of the fact that if I don't remain silent, then then I might get a community guideline strike for real. And this is actually the period of time that YouTube is starting to screen my channel or something. And as a result, some live streams I did from from like years past have been deleted by me. Because it doesn't really meet the same standards as what I expect from my live streams anymore. But yeah. Now, if you were wondering where, where I was these past few days, I've been playing too much Tetris. <laughs> and even though there were, were, were like events like <coughs> Hogwarts Legacy coming out for uh, for the PS5, Switch, Xbox, and PCs, we gotta talk about Reset Era and how woke they are. Reset Era has banned all discussion of Hogwarts Legacy over J.K. Rowling's controversial comments. Like, I don't know, it's really unsettling that a gaming forum decides to go this far with it. But honestly, if we compare Forspoken with, with like, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, then we already know Hi-Fi Rush is basically, even though it's apples to oranges, Hi-Fi Rush is more well liked than Forspoken. I already talked about it previously, but now because I'm starting to hear rumors about Steam Deck 2. And also because of my current financial situation, I actually won't be buying a Steam Deck anymore. It's always really sad because I plan to do it for the 10th anniversary of Trails of Cold Steel. But I guess I'll have to, like. I guess I'll have to start the series all over again from, uh. With my new RTX 3060 or something. I missed the cow. But the cow's actually. They don't like. But 60 gigs of bloatware on the S23. That is not. That's not a good thing. What's LG left to smartphone business? And. And Apple's just messing around with you at this point. By the way, Apple is Apple is actually planning to release a documentary on their Apple TV Plus subscription service about the movie Tetris. Now, it's going to be exclusive to that platform, but as we know with what I talked about Apple, you own nothing and you will be happy. Yeah. Okay, it's just one more race, then I'll show you another game today. Okay, so... One more thing is... That 
Oh yeah, we got this course again. What was I discussing? <laughs> oh right. There's also like some stuff that I really, really. Oh no. Wait, Nintendo Direct tomorrow? Well, what do I expect to see on the Nintendo Direct tomorrow? Tomorrow I expect to see Nintendo, like, unveil Wave 4 of the, uh, Booster Course Pass. I'm also expecting Waluigi Stadium to make an appearance in the Booster Course Pass as well. But right now I'm getting hammered by items. After all, that's this is what they call frantic items. And I also really hope to see some, like, games come to Nintendo Switch as well, like, never know what to, what to see it on the Switch, but, I mean at the Nintendo Direct, but, the Bruce of Course Pass that came out, uh, that was announced last year was totally unexpected, because of the fact that Galaxy S9, uh, the Bruce of Course Pass was Gave us this course as well as as well as other courses as well, but come on! Oh wow! So many items at once. Okay, so that might be it for today's stream, or is it? Today I want to talk to you about a new game called Exit Simulator Deluxe. But we first have to watch this highway reel. This is actually not a good race for me, so... Oh wait, let's view the results and we'll play the next game. On our screen. Exit Man Deluxe. Now this game is actually based off the Japanese exit sign. Not the American one. Because the exit sign used in other countries is actually a... Uh, a man running to a door, and was designed by by someone in Japan. However, in America, they use words instead. So, I'm gonna play against an AI. Oh, I win. Now we're gonna play. Okay, so that's actually it for today's stream. <coughs> On Friday, we'll be covering the Nintendo Direct if I don't get community guideline strike. So, uh, 